was that one of Noah's sons uh, did something while he was asleep, uh, shamed him in some way. When Noah awoke, he was aware of that, and he pronounced a curse. He pronounced a curse not on Ham, though. He pronounced a curse on one of Ham's sons. Ham had four sons. Canaan put Mitzrayim, or Egypt, and Cush. The Cushites settled below Egypt, and they are where black Africans descended. However, Noah did not curse the Cushites. Noah cursed Canaan, or Canaanites. And these are the people that we read about in the Old Testament that Israel was commanded to conquer and destroy, which they did in the Old Testament. So the answer is no. And it's a simple understanding of Genesis 9 and Genesis 10, along with a good Bible atlas where you can see where the Cushites descended. Additionally, you can read about Moses. Moses married a Cushite woman, a black woman. Moses' sister, Miriam, Aaron's wife, criticized Moses for his marriage choice. And as a result, God struck her with leprosy. And so, sort of to bring that around the story of Genesis 9, you can see that God punished a woman who was angry that Moses had chosen to marry a Cushite. The scriptures, for example, in Exodus 21, uh, condemns uh, the kidnapping and sale of people, just flat out. And the modern slave trade, the slave trade that, that took men and women from West Africa, kidnapped them, sold them, put them on ships and brought them on the Middle Passage to the British colonies and then to the United States and sold them like cattle, uh, that, is, that is expressly forbidden by the Bible, which forbids, prohibits kidnapping and selling people. Uh, so we can, we can have clear moral authority from the scriptures, not just the New Testament, but from the Old Testament, that makes it very clear that slavery is practiced in the modern world, the modern slave trade, was antithetical to biblical justice and righteousness. Slavery was the foundation of American wealth, especially in the slavery yeah. enabled the settlers to harvest the wealth of their new nation. And all it took was a tweaking of their consciences and some twisting of their Christian beliefs. That those responsible for such systematic cruelty could claim to be followers of Jesus and even use Christian teaching to justify enslaving others is truly hard to fathom. It's one of the clearest examples in history of how faith can be twisted to justify our worst behavior. Slaveholders were always looking for reasons to justify their practice of treating humans as property. Religion played a major role in the justification of human bondage. And those people who are not able to see their own desire for power, their own desire for domination, take these powerful principles and twist them in order to keep that power. And this is what we see in the slaveholders. They could not recognize that their interpretation of scripture was tied to their own wealth, their own prosperity, their own desire to maintain power. They were so blinded by it. Egyptian scrolls discovered by adventurer Antonio Labolo and translated by Joseph Smith. The Book of Abraham is particularly interesting because it talks about the curse of Ham. The curse of Ham occurred in Genesis when Ham, the son of Noah, discovered his father naked in a tent and either had sexual relations with him didn't cover him or mocked him, depending on your source. Ham's son Canaan was cursed with a dark complexion, referred to as the curse of Cain, and the title servant of servants referred to as the curse of Ham, all because Noah was pissed off. These verses of the Bible incorporated into Mormon doctrine would be used by Joseph Smith and like-minded individuals to justify slavery in the pre-Civil War era. Smith would also use this passage as a means to bar black men from joining the Mormon priesthood. 